Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Brian Reeves, Brian with a Y Reeves. I'm the author, Brian Withrow Reeves, of the book Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her, a guide for your journey through the transformational fires of love and intimacy. And I am gonna be reading chapter two in this video. I've already read chapter one in a previous video and my plan is uh, to just come to beautiful spots over the next few months and, and record the book this way. It, it's available on Audible. I've already done the audio book. Uh, you can purchase that if you want. Uh, of course, you know the print book's available on Amazon, all that. I've sold about 10,000 copies and a 4.6, 4.7 range, so people are, are definitely digging it. Um, and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to hear me just read it this way. And again, you know, beautiful spots. There's a little bit of airplane activity here, but um, it's all good. I'll also be taking you at times deeper into the, the stories uh, behind the passages. So anyway, let's dive in. Chapter 2. A Man's Evolution in Intimacy with Women. I used to just want a woman's sexy body. And later I wanted her intelligent mind too. Now, as the mature masculine man in me awakens, there's something far more precious than her body or even her mind that I covet. Her devotional heart. Here's my evolution in intimacy with women. As a teenager, sex dominated my mind, and a warm, smooth body could easily satisfy. Didn't matter what thoughts she thought or how deep her connection to heart, the depth of my curiosity literally stopped at skin deep. All I cared about was, what does her skin feel like against mine? What does she smell like, taste like? Will she press herself passionately up against me? Will she moan? Will she scratch me, bite me, tease me? Will she stick her wet tongue in my ear? And where in the world of her body is that magic little hidden spot I've heard so much about that's supposed to make her heavens shake? And what will happen when our bodies meet? These were the sensual, if shallow, depths of my interest in the feminine form as a young man. This first stage is purely focused on the physical body. The first stage of body focus persisted throughout my 20s well into my 30s. And many people in our culture live primarily in this first stage throughout their lives. Many more core masculine men remain stuck on female body infatuation long after their own bodies can even do anything about it. And for some core feminine women, however, their first stage focus may be less about a man's physical body and more about his body of material resources. Now, lest you think this sexist, you may consider that a man experiencing this first stage of intimate relating won't really care about a woman's access to resources, and a first stage woman can be easily influenced by a man's access to resources. Now, for my part, I remember struggling in this first stage with my attraction to an early girlfriend when her body began to change from sexy, lithe teenager to more curvaceous young woman. She was an amazing young lady. But as her body changed, I lost interest in her, a first stage reaction. As my 30s wore on, what a woman thought about started to become far more interesting to me. Who she was in conversation began to matter more. Shallow-minded, sexy chicks, at least as my arrogance perceived them to be shallow-minded, they became less attractive. I started longing for thought-provoking sexy chicks the ones who could parry with me in conversation and perhaps teach me things about the world I didn't already know. I was still primarily body focused, but I began to more fully appreciate a woman who could meet me intellectually. I wanted to make love to a woman's mind almost as much as her body. This second stage is mind body focused. If you're reading this, you likely live mostly in this stage. You may surely still experience body focused temptations, but your attraction to mind complements, if not overrides, most physical attractions. It could be also that a more feminine person experiences this differently than a more masculine person. A more masculine person tends to relate or connect to the world more through the mind-intellect filter, whereas a more feminine person tends to relate or connect to the world more through feeling experiences. Now, again, I want to just step out of this for a second. I, I, I haven't read the introduction yet. And I, in the introduction, I'll probably read that at a, at a later time. But in the introduction, I talk about masculine and feminine energies and how I use them in this book. There's a lot of charge around those terms. And there's a, I think people in the world today are wielding 
terms like masculine and feminine to impose certain standards of being and ways of being on, on men and women particularly that just frankly aren't helpful. So I do use these terms in here, but please know that when I say masculine, I do not mean man. And when I say feminine, I do not mean woman. We all have masculine and feminine capacities. And I think that actually our mastery as human beings comes down to our capacity to in the moment offer masculine expression or feminine expression, whether man or woman or otherwise, uh, depending on, you know, attuned to what the moment truly needs does the moment need compassion does the moment need collaboration does the moment you know require nurturing a man or a woman knows how to offer that does a moment require decisiveness does a moment require um you know fierce direction and commitment to a path and and blocking things that a man or a woman knows how to offer that so that's the caveat but these birds are off the charts. Uh, that is the, the caveat to masculine when I use the words masculine and feminine. Some women are going to identify more with, with masculine energy. Some men are going to identify more with feminine energy. Nothing wrong with any of it. Okay, great. Glad we got that out of the way. Okay, back in we go. Many people can fake this second stage experience, at least for a time. After all, telling someone you're shallow is no compliment in our world. But when a first stage person who is pretending, even if unconsciously so, to be a second stage person, when they have a partner who loses physical allure or substantial material resources, the eyes and libido of that first stage consciousness will start wandering. And interestingly, I found over and over in this second stage era that there was no woman whose mind I could ever fully embrace. I would inevitably encounter something in her thought world that I would object to. Like she's not ambitious enough, or worldly enough, kind enough, philosophical enough, smart enough, whatever. She was never enough. And these objections would invariably diminish my capacity for true intimacy with her. How could I fully be with her when I was resisting how she was being? And despite that enduring obstacle, my second stage orientation held that loving a woman completely meant loving her mind and body. I was sure this orientation would yield the magic formula for fairy tale love. Alas, there was another stage yet to come, a third stage. I'm only waking up to this third stage now, and I'm profoundly hungry for it. And again, remember, I'm writing this. Uh, this is the early days of a man's uh, uh, awakening to, to love and to what it means to really show up for a relationship. So you'll see as this continues to unfold, I'm about to read the, the third stage part of this chapter. But, um, you know, as I was, I'm, as I'm reading this now, you know, I wrote this about 10 years ago. I'm a 50 year old man now. I wrote this when I was probably about 40, 41. And, uh, you know, I'm, in, I'm married now for nine years and, oh boy, what a, what a journey is relationship. So anyway, let's, so let's finish this last part of the chapter. This third stage is body, mind, spirit focused. It's about devotion. While it certainly encompasses attraction to body and mind, it also transcends them. I'm not going to pretend to know this experience just yet, for I can't say I've ever been truly devoted to a woman yet. I am noticing that as a more mature masculine essence begins to stir in me, an attractive body and mind alone no longer suffice. I want more than just to intertwine myself with her physical and mental worlds. I want to penetrate the depths of her soul. I want not just a warm body and intellectual play. I want her deep devotional heart. I also want to give her mine. While I'm still learning what this means, what I do know is I have finally evolved some ruckus in the trees back there. While I'm still learning what this means, what I do know is I have finally evolved to a moment in life where my deepest yearning is for the experience of such complete devotion to the feminine that my love both embraces her body and mind, but also transcends them. However, I currently have no feminine partner to engage on this adventure. And there are certainly days when I taste the pungent angst of this yearning as yet unrequited. Sometimes it feels like reaching desperate for a breath underwater. But let's see where life wants to take this. I'm ready for stage three. 
so says the awakening man in me. And then I finish, and then I finish this chapter with a quote from Osho. Love is freedom, but not total. If love becomes devotion, then it becomes total freedom. It means surrendering yourself completely. The next chapter is chapter three, men aren't supposed to understand women. And that'll be in the next video. Again, please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps the, the channel out and uh, gets this book and these, these important messages and words in front of more people. And um, come along with me on this ride as I read uh, Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her, your guide for your journey through the transformational fires of love and intimacy in the coming videos. I'm Brian with a Y, Withrow Reeves. Thanks for watching. See you in the next chapter, in the next video.